Um, Nicola Mallon has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health. I would remind members that if they wish to add or ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clark, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health whether all children in Northern Ireland with spinal muscular atrophy type 1 will be included in the potentially life changing new nursing drug trial. Call the Minister of Health. This is um, a very sensitive issue as these families are dealing with very difficult diagnosis of SMA and their children have very complex needs. I understand the concerns of those families involved and the request to have their children enrolled in the extended access programme of nursing, the potentially life-changing drug, to treat spinal muscular atrophy, and I fully am sympathetic to their concerns. Clinicians in the Belfast Health and Social Care Trust made a clinical decision to use the extended access programme to provide this drug in an individual case to treat SMA. On this basis, the extension of this programme is a decision for the clinicians within the Belfast Trust. Like the member, I am um, aware of the concerns of parents of children with SMA about the communication. My department have raised these concerns with the Trust, who in turn have assured me that urgent action will be taken to make contact with the families involved. I understand that direct contact will be made this Thursday with the families, offering a face-to-face -face meeting with the, clinician team, uh, the clinical team in the Children's Hospital. Thank you. I call Nicola Mallon for a supplementary. Um, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and can I thank um, the Minister um, for her response. Um, the Minister will know that I, I have raised this issue. I wrote to her twice before Christmas asking her to meet with the family uh, to discuss specifically the access to the drugs. We have only four children in Northern Ireland who um, have this rare condition, one of which has getting access to the drugs trial, three of which uh, have yet to to be get, get any decision around access to it. Can I ask the Minister, um, is there any assurance that can be given that if those three children, Keisha Fitzsimmons, Mia Warren and Noah Collins, do meet the suitability tests, that they will face a very real prospect of getting access to what is a life-saving and a life-changing drug, given that the Health Department does not have to pay for the drug, but simply provide the theatre space and the medical staff to administer it? Minister. I thank the member for her question and um, again uh, my member of my team has met with all of the families involved to discuss their individual circumstances and obviously everybody's condition and will have different circumstances. This is a clini clinical decision, it's not for me to make, to make a decision in relation to who should get what drug or who can get access to the trial but obviously I want to make sure that these families who are dealing with very complex challenging conditions to make sure they're given absolutely every support and every lifeline possible because that is what we're talking about here. So um, I think that obviously there's been a, a breakdown in communication and we need to rectify that problem and that's something that I've asked the Trust to do. So I'm glad that the families will be engaged with and offer a face-to-face -face meeting uh, on Thursday just to, for them to get the full facts and the full details. I think it's important that we don't raise expectations because it's not you or I aren't medically qualified in order to decide if it, which child should have the, the drug or access to the trial, but if clinicians decide that that's the case and that's, that's who should be making the decision. So I think it's important that um, because it is so sensitive and we don't raise expectations of families, but um, I'm glad that the families will now have an opportunity to talk to the clinicians and actually talk about their individual circumstances with the medically trained people who are qualified to make the decision and give them access to the trial if that is you know, what's suitable for their child. Thank you. I call Andy Allen. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And can I take this opportunity to thank the member for North Belfast for bringing this very important member to the floor and for the minister coming here today. Minister, uh, I too have wrote to you regarding this matter, and indeed I'm aware that your officials have been out and seen one of the families who have engaged with me. Minister, from my engagement with the clinicians, it is my understanding that it is indeed resources and infrastructure that is a barrier to these other three families being offered this procedure. So if that is the case, Minister, will you have engagement with the Health Trust and ensure that resources and infrastructure are in place to offer this procedure to the other three families? Minister. Again, thank the member for his question. I mean, again, I make the point that it's ultimately for clinicians to decide who gets access and, and decide on the allocation of resources to make or to provide this drug. We know that it is. Um, there's a lot of uh, additional needs in relation to being able to provide the drug. But let's be very clear: it's not a money issue in that sense. This is about this is a, tri a drug which is not yet licensed for use in the north. And as I've said before. It has been made available to one child as part of a special programme. So it's definitely not an issue or not a question of there being a lack of funding to supply the drug. 
decisions again around the use of the clinical resources in hospitals are quite properly for clinicians to make. But needless to say, these are families in very difficult circumstances with, with very challenging, uh, the children have very challenging needs and, and, and I'm sure it's very difficult for all the families involved. So we need to be very sensitive to the issue. I'm very, I, I, I can give you an assurance that all those families will be properly engaged with and if there is a route for them to get into this trial and it is beneficial medically for their child, then that's something that the clinician will have to arrive at that decision with in conjunction with the family. Thank you. I call Pat Sheehan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answers thus far. It's clear in this case that there's been a breakdown in the relationship between the parents and the trust. Can the Minister tell us what uh, is being done to rectify this problem? Minister. Yeah, I think that's something certainly that we all can agree on, that there has been a, 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 the concerns of parents are valid in relation to communication. So we will rectify that. And as I said, that the, all families will be engaged with directly by the trust uh, and in turn the clinicians in relation to their own child, their own particular circumstances, and giving them the fullest um, information possible to allow them to make a decision in relation to the future uh, health support for, the, for their child. Thank you. I call Paula Bradshaw. Speaker, um, thank you, Minister. It seemed very hopeful um, your response this morning, and I, I hope that the clinicians will, will come through with, with the best solutions for the families. Um, it strikes me, as you say there, it's not really about resources, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's about getting the people in the system. And in that regard, because this is your last session within this um, mandate, um, when are you going to launch the waiting list strategy that you said would come out this month? Minister. Thank you, Member, for your question. I've, I've said I'll publish it before the end of the month, and I still am, am on course to do that. We're just finalising all the details, but I will uh, will we'll take the opportunity to, to publish it, as I said I would. I think it's part of the wider transformation programme, which I've already set out, and that we need to see brought through. That we have to transform the health service. We've all and, and have well rehearsed the, the arguments for we need, why we need to do that. But part of the transformation and, and building the public confidence has to be around tackling waiting lists. So I am on course to publish that plan. Uh, call Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I also thank the Minister for her answers and for Nicola Mallon for bringing this important question today. I understand through correspondence with my colleague Andy Allen, and he's articulated that earlier, that limit resources and challenges are been cited as the reason. These are not acceptable to reasons for young children to be denied access to a drugs trial. So elections aside, Minister, what guarantee will you give that these children will not continue to be neglected in the weeks and months ahead? I, I was very happy with the tone of the question so far because we have to be very sensitive to this issue. I think it's unfortunate that you're trying to use it as an electioneering issue. These are four families who are, who are very, in very much difficult um, situation in relation to their diagnosis, which can be very life-threatening for some of these children. So we have to be very, very sensitive to the needs of these families. So what I, what I, in, in relation to um, the, the drug itself and getting into the clinical trial, as I've said, the drug is not yet licensed. We don't want to build false hope that this drug or this clinical trial is going to benefit all these children because we don't know, because you're not qualified to make that assessment, neither am I, but I'm very clear about that. These are clinic clinician decisions and that's how they should be taken. What's most important here is that the families are engaged with, that the communication is issue is addressed and that they get all the information and all the fullest of support that the health service can provide those people with at this moment in time. I call Mark H. Durkin. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answers thus far. The Minister is quite right. It would be ultra crepidarian of her and of us to say what patients get what treatment. Those decisions should be made by the experts. And I think you heard a bit of an assurance here. Just ask the Minister to reiterate it that this decision and indeed other decisions around patients' treatment are made on a clinical basis and not a financial one. Yes, I can absolutely confirm that. I am not a clinician, I am not medically qualified, and I, neither would I ever want to make a decision over what child would get life or access to any sort of life-saving um, drug or into any clinical trial. It has to be based on medical considerations, and I would never interfere in relation to that. Thank you. That completes this item of business. I ask the House to take its ease uh, before we move on to the next business. Thank you.